So before we get started on the two-phase method for non-standard problems, I wanted to remind you what a standard simplex method problem was so that you can see um, how it's different from these non-standard problems and also why we need to adapt our strategy a little bit. So I called a simplex, or sorry, I called a linear program a standard linear program or a standard problem if we were maximizing some objective function, which was a linear combination of our variables, subject to constraints that look like this. And the constraints we're always going to have some linear combination of our variables on the left side is less than or equal to some positive number over here. And we also always had this non-negativity constraint where x and y were assumed to be non-negative. And in the video where we looked at solving these graphically, what we did was we drew the feasible region, which in this case would be this little triangle over here. And for that triangle, we were trying to optimize z over the x, y coordinates in that triangle. And what we found in that video was that we could always just plug in the corners because we knew that this would be optimized on one of the corners. And in this case, it looks like it'll be optimized here at 0, 4, because if I plug in 0, 4 into our objective function, then I get a z value of 12 at this corner. Now notice at this corner, z is equal to 0. So at the origin, I mean. So I've also written the simplex tableau that we would start with. This is the initial simplex tableau for this problem. Remember that to convert this inequality into an equality, I need to add a slack variable. So that's where that S1 column is coming from. I'm also suppressing the ordinary Z column. So I'm identifying Z with this bottom right value. Now here's something that I want to point out. If we take the initial simplex tableau and just read off the solution from this, so without pivoting, we just read off the solution, we notice that x is a non-basic variable because it has more than one non-zero entry. y is also non-basic. z is equal to zero because that's the bottom right entry. And s1 would equal four because these would be deleted because they're non-basic and I would get the equation s1 equals 4 from that top line. So that tells me that x equals y equals z equals 0 and s1 equals 4. That's what I read from the initial simplex tableau. But notice that x equals y equals z equals 0, that corresponds to this bottom corner in the feasible region. So it's telling me the x, y, and z values for that bottom left corner in the feasible region. And it turns out that in these standard simplex method problems, this is geometrically where we're always starting. So you can always read off the value of x1, x2, and so on, and read off the corresponding value of z. They'll all be zero at the initial uh, simplex tableau. And that's because the simplex method by default is essentially starting at this corner, and then if it has negative indicators still, then it, it, by pivoting, will transfer to one of these adjacent corners, and it'll keep transferring from corner to corner until it finds the best corner. So if we were to pivot here, then we would find a um, corresponding x value of 0, a y value of 4, and a z value of 12 after pivoting from this simplex tableau once and then reading off the solution. That's because the simplex method is designed to find the nearest adjacent corner that does best. So the first pivoting step would just move us up to this corner and we would find the optimal corner in that way. So now we've seen two different ways of finding that this is the best corner. One way is by using the graphical method and then just testing all of the corners. The second way is to use the simplex method which traverses the corners for you in a nice way. So um, that's what the strategy is when it comes to standard simplex method problems. There are a few modifications that I want to make in this set of notes. So here are some types of non-standard problems that we're going to consider. The first type has constraints that look like this, so the inequality can face the other way. In this case, the variables can be bigger than or equal to some positive number. The second variation that we're going to look at is trying to minimize a certain objective function rather than maximize it. And then the last thing that we're going to look at is equality for constraints. 
So this would be a constraint, but it doesn't have greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It just has a, um, an equality that must hold. So this is not what we're trying to optimize. This is just one of our constraints that would normally be listed as an inequality. So the, the problems with trying to optimize in these cases, um, well, I guess the problem is that whenever you try to draw the feasible region that corresponds to some of these situations, you don't always get a feasible region that includes the origin. So our default starting point for the simplex method won't quite work. And for that reason, we have to break into these two phases. So phase one is just a series of steps that we'll develop to get to the feasible region. So first we'll figure out how to get into a corner that we actually care about. And then once we have a corner that we actually care about, we can use the ordinary simplex method, that's phase two, to traverse the corners in the natural way until we find the corner that's optimal. So in this video, uh, or really in this lecture, what we're going to be doing is we'll be talking about phase one, which is how to get into the feasible region. That we'll need some new steps for. So we'll talk about the method that we'll use in terms of the matrix to get into the feasible region. Phase two is what we've already been using. It's just the ordinary simplex method, which allows you to take some simplex tableau and then continue pivoting until you get rid of all of the negative indicators and can just read off the optimal solution. So phase two is what we've already been doing, but for phase one, we're gonna have to do some um, new steps depending on which of these non-standard problem types we want to be facing.